What's up everybody, Jeremy Weiss here with Weiss Tech Hockey and in this video I want to show you a, uh, a little power play breakout that I've had a lot of success with and uh, you can take a look at it, see if there's any of uh, the elements that may apply to your team and pick and choose however much of this makes sense to apply in your uh, given situation. So in this particular power play, um, you can see we've got our, our designated defenseman. Now remember when we were talking about our, uh, our power play setups in the offensive zone, um, we, we didn't really designate positions as much as we designated right-handed, left-handed. So um, depending on whether you set up on the left side of the ice or the right side of the ice, um, you're basically just gonna take these players and assign them to specific responsibilities in this power play setup. So most of the time if you're running a power play or a, an umbrella setup on your power play, um, this guy right here will probably be the furthest man back uh, on the umbrella. So he'll be the one that's initiating the breakout, which is another reason why he needs to be a good passer and a good puck handler because uh, not only is he quarterbacking the, the umbrella in the offensive zone, but he's also quarterbacking the entire breakout um, if the puck ever does get dumped out. So um, this is the setup. He's going to come back behind the net and he's going to stop. This is very important. This guy has to have patience, um, set up, stop, and wait for your other players to get into position. Okay, uh, the forward and the defenseman, um, what they're going to do, and, and this is another case where I like to designate that you're going to come out the same side of the ice every time. Um, there are enough different options from this setup that it doesn't matter if the other team realizes, you know, hey, you know what, they're always coming out the same side of the ice. That's fine. There's so many different options within this framework that uh, it, doesn't, it doesn't really make a difference um, for you. So what we're gonna do is have this guy stop. These two are gonna time it out so that they're swinging through at exactly the same time, okay? So this defenseman is gonna swing towards the boards and this forward is gonna swing this way. And you'll notice it's a really deep swing. I want that deep swing. Uh, we wanna have short controlled passes in this situation. And by swinging deep enough, you can <clears throat> you're gonna give yourself enough time and enough space to have the rest of the timing work out properly. So um, as this swing is happening, the defenseman is gonna pop out. And in this case, uh, our team will have designated that we're always gonna come out the left side, okay? So the defenseman will pop out and make a pass up to this forward, okay? Now, um, as with all timing, everything keys off, uh, off of one starting event, and that is the starting event. So as, as this forward sees that the pass is being made, now he's gonna begin to swing through, timing it though, so that he can be a front side option for this forward, okay? So when the forward picks up the puck, he's gonna take a few steps forward, and generally what happens is the other team will usually, you know, they're using some sort of a, possibly a T4 check, something like this, where they've got one guy kind of down low, one guy in the middle, and then their two defensemen are back. So um, if this guy's open, this forward here can move it straight to him, okay? Uh, but what usually happens is with the T4 check, it's almost similar to a, a neutral zone trap where they're really trying to angle you and take away your front side passing options, which is fine. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna say that, you know, maybe they're trying to do that. What we're gonna have happen here is our defenseman, after he makes that pass, is gonna follow up slightly behind that forward, okay? And then as he sees that this forward has bitten and is now angling this player, our player is just gonna do, our forward is just gonna do a simple drop pass. Okay, so he's gonna drop it. He knows his defenseman is supporting him. Drops it to that defenseman. That defenseman will immediately take it. And this is another reason why these guys need to swing super low. He's gonna take it and immediately fire cross ice pass to the far side defenseman. Okay, far side defenseman. <coughs> <coughs> Excuse me, I'm doing too much talking here. Uh, far side defenseman will pick up the puck and he's watching. Now, as this play is unfolding, this forward is timing it. So he's watching, watching, watching. Then as he sees that, um, you know, that that far side pass has been made, now he's gonna explode across into the middle, okay? Now he's a possible uh, breakaway man for this guy. So this guy takes it, takes a couple steps, and now he can fire a hard stick to stick pass right through to this guy. Um, unless it's a complete breakaway, 
I usually like to say gain the zone and set up the power play, okay? Um, if it's a two-on-two two or, or, you know, I mean, a two-on-one, you got to be a, a good judge of, of the possible scoring option. But anything anything worse than a two-on-one, so like a two-on-two two or a three-on-two, um, just gain the zone and set up. So all this guy's going to do now is basically we'll have him drive wide and, uh, you know, gain the zone. And depending on which side that you have set up, he's going to set up and work the puck to the proper pl proper player, proper position, so that you can set up whatever power play setup you have. Um, this guy will will come into the zone as well, and the forward comes in, and everybody goes to their proper positions. But this is a very effective breakout <clears throat> with a lot of different options. Um, if you don't do the pass back and across, let me just kind of show you a few other different variations. Um, you can execute a simple pass to this guy if he's open. So move it up ice, and then, you know, again, this guy is timing based on, um, you know, potential where the play is ending up. So he won't have skated quite as far as if, if, if he sees that that pass has been made to the close forward. So now the close forward can maybe do a, uh, you know, a quick one-touch pass up ice to this breakaway man. Um, or in this case, it may be, if that guy's already out of position, it may make more sense for him to drive wide. But there are a lot of different uh, possible um, possible setups given this particular uh, positioning. So that is a, a very effective power play breakout setup that uh, I've used a lot. Pick and choose uh, whatever aspects of this makes sense for your team. But uh, this is definitely one that has worked well for me in the past.